Thank you. Hello, everybody. Um, so yes, so I'm an um, infographics designer. What I want to talk about today is how I use Tableau with Illustrator. So are there any designers in the room or anybody that, so not just data people, but designery types? OK. Um, I found this very early, early on. When I used Tableau way back in 2000, and, <coughs> um, I realized that the ability to export a PDF from, tab, from Tableau was really, really handy. So I'm just going to talk through the process that I use. You may be going, I've been doing that for years too, that's fine. But for the people that might not know, it's a really, really useful tip because it helps me create really interesting infographics quickly by doing all the heavy lifting in Tableau itself. So if I need to create maps with sized circles or colored countries or really complex charts, I can do that in Tableau and then export it into Illustrator. So I just want to basically talk through how I do it. So um, Tableau plus Illustrator equals happy face, as far as I'm concerned. Um, so you've all seen this. This is Tableau. This is lovely. This is that standard um, data set that everybody who's demoing Tableau uses. And we've just created a map of states with lovely colored circles on top of them. So if you want to get this into Illustrator so you can do more with it and more, more prettifying. There's various ways in Tableau that you can export as a PDF, and you may have already discovered this anyway. So I use a Mac. So on a Mac, you, um, you basically print as PDF. On a PC, I think there is actually a Save as PDF on the, on the Tableau menu. But something you have to do, first of all, is make sure it fits to no more than one page across or one page down. If you don't do that, you end up sometimes with really horrible big charts, and Illustrator does not like it. So try and keep it to one page, and Illustrator can actually do something with it. So make sure it fits to no more than one page down, no, no more than one page across. Then, uh, this is on a Mac, you save as PDF, and then you get your little PDF saved in there, which I have um, labelled Mac 1. Very handy. Then you open up Illustrator, you open up an empty, a blank document, and then you place, so this here, you place your PDF inside the Illustrator, uh, Illustrator screen. And that's what it looks like. So that's Illustrator. If any of you have never used Illustrator, it's, um, it's a really useful graphics design package where basically you're playing with shapes. It's kind of like paint, but a lot better than paint. But you get to basically get to move a lot more expensive than paint as well. It's like £40 a month or something ridiculous. But um, you can do a lot with it, and I use Illustrator all the time. So essentially, you plunk your PDF on your page in Illustrator, and there it is looking lovely. Because it's a PDF, all of those are kind of separate elements. So... That circle's a separate element, and the map background is separate, and the key is separate, and the text is separate. So once we know that, you can start to play around with it. So once it's inside Illustrator, make sure you've got it all selected, and you do Menu, Object, Release, Clipping, Mask, or Shortcut, Control or Command, plus Alt, plus 7, and that does that. So suddenly, your map in Illustrator, your map that you created in Tableau, suddenly becomes lots of really nice, useful shapes that you can change and tweak around with and move around. In Tableau, you need to do something called ungroup. So that's up here, because at the moment, these are all still kind of stuck together. So ungroup, and then you can go into Tableau. You can actually go back into your diagram in Illustrator and start deleting the bits you don't want, like that really annoying sheet one. You can change the font of the labels. You can change the colors. So you could, for example, create something like that. Now, I know that you can do a lot of this in Tableau anyway. I know that. But you might want to bring in um, some different things. And you might actually want to put that with other graphics in a big full-page infographic. It's also very nice with making strange colored maps, which now mean nothing. But you can do a lot with it, because you can actually change the outlines. And as I say, you can do a lot of this in Tableau itself, but it's, in Illustrator, you get a lot more choice of the editing. So here's, here's a, um, if you wanted to create a little pretty heart shape with a bubble. So you create your bubble map, go through the same process, get it into Illustrator, and then you can just physically move the circles around. You could do it to have a lot of fun creating images for social media or um, anything you wanted like that. This is the top half of an infographic. I actually created the map in Tableau itself and then exported it into Illustrator. Imagine trying to do that by hand. I was just saying to someone, having to know where all these countries are is the first bit. It's like, where, where actually is, I don't know, Romania, I don't know. Tableau knows, thank God. So Tableau creates that lovely map, which I then put into a big uh, infographic like that. Similarly, I did this work for the Sunday Mirror uh, a couple of years ago, and they wanted maps of things. And again, okay, 
there's only a few circles on there, but lazily did it in Tableau, exported it back into Illustrator, and then did more formatting. Thank you very much. And here's uh, one final one I did ages ago, and this was a story that broke in the news. God, it must be five, six years ago. A, a chap called Adam Werity was a friend of um, Dr. Liam Fox. And this friend of his was taken on all these fancy trips all around the world. So I plotted, and there is a map under there, the black Tableau map. I plotted where he'd been and the timeline of when he went there. So that was created in Tableau. That was created in Tableau. And then in Illustrator, I drew the lines in between them. Um, and that's it, and that's me. Thank you very much. Ta -ta. <laughs>